You did? I don't have my phone with you. Did you let me read For who? Oh, Joette. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's All the bleachers. We're going to make some furniture out of the bleachers. Okay. Sure. Go on that square. Okay. No, we're not going to finish that. Tonight. No kidding. Finish you tonight. know what? I need an agenda. I'm finishing. There's Jeff. Huh? Do you have an agenda? Cut two edges. Good. I like the, I like the agenda in four oh, times three. That's okay. Uh, out of the house okay. out there, ten yeah. across the river there. Okay. Let's go ahead and call the meeting to order, please. Administration Operations Committee meeting, Monday, April 23rd, 2018, 7 p.m. Heidrich, Holtmeyer. Here. Moheski. Aye. Patkey. Here. Pettit. Here. Scornia. Here. Solentrup. Waterman. Here. Please rise for right the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will all the committee members answer if they have or have not read the minutes of the meeting dated February 26, 2018? Holtmeyer? Aye. Moheski? Aye. Patkey? No. Honesty is good. Pettit? I don't even no. pull up. <laughs> Go into your settings. Scornia? Yes. To the CI. Waterman. Yes. yes. Go into the rill. I have trouble getting these up, too. Did everybody say what they had? Okay. Yeah. Having read the minutes, are there any comments or questions? Any corrections? <coughs> it won't, this won't. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Mary says my Second, please. Second. Sorry. A, a motion by Waterman, seconded by Holtmeyer, <laughs> to approve the minutes of our last meeting dated February 26, 2018. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? By your vote, you approve the minutes. Thank you. Report of department heads, public safety, police, traffic, and committee. Chief? Good evening, everyone. You should have a letter that was sent forward. References a concrete slab and piers construction at the firearm shooting range. We uh, did three local contractors for bidding. Sullentrup contracting on the bid at uh, $6,462. This phase of the construction for the shooting range is to put the slab down and have it available. The next phase is to add a pavilion on top of the slab. And this money is, comes out of a, a sum of money that was bequeathed to us a few years back. This is the last monies that we have left in that account. Pretty well. So I just need your approval for the contract. Any questions or comments regarding this item? Make a motion to send it on to council. Second it. Okay, we have a motion by Holtmeyer, seconded by Moheski, to send this item on to council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you've sent that on. Thank you. I understand Thank you, you used the firing range? Yeah. Used the firing range for the first time with our new officers. Worked out very nicely. Needs to be smoothed out a little yet, but we'll take care of that as time goes. But the uh, Connex trailer's out up on a mound out there. That'll be used for storing targets and other items for the range. Uh, big thanks to the uh, Public Works Street Department and that for helping us grade it and put millings down and set it up and get it, get the berm up and getting everything really set up out there. And uh, it's looking good. So when we get it set up, we'll have an invite out there to show it to council. So Very good. And just let you know, we're keeping up on our solution rate on crime. So maybe I can make this 60%, I'll try. So. <laughs> okay, very Thank good. You. Thank you. Fire protection. Bill. Uh, Bill Helmick, Fire Chief. 
Uh, what we got coming up in uh, May very shortly is we're, uh, we get waiting for uh, contact from Pierce Manufacturing. As you know, we have a rescue squad truck on order, uh, the uh, previous sales tax, and we're waiting for the final date to be set for a meeting in Florida on the pre-construction conference, which should happen the first two or three weeks of May. We're, the sooner the better, but uh, that is the next step in the chain of events since we prepaid the uh, apparatus is to agree on the construction documents with Pierce Manufacturing and go over any differences and reconcile those on site. So we're doing that very shortly. Uh, in addition, uh, reference to our uh, fire protection consultant, uh, ESCI, who's looking at our fire station location, as well as helping us with the ISO review for our insurance uh, public protection class, we are scheduling an on-site two-day visit. Uh, the gentleman from Steve McCutcheon, who's been our uh, liaison with the ESCI and the assigned engineer, will be out May 7 and 8. We will go on site to the proposed real estate. We will also visit all fire stations, uh, communications uh, headquarters, and, and office 911, and public works because those are the key components in the ISO review. It's fire protection, uh, 40 50 percent, public works 40 percent. Communications 10%. So we'll visit all those sites. Then we will have, at uh, the same time with the uh, engineer on site, we plan on having a conference call with the ISO manager out of Chicago, uh, May 7th, somewhere between the time range currently of 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, Darren and others will be invited if they want to make that conference call with us, with the consultant. But uh, that should happen the first, first week of May as well. That's pretty much it. Any questions? Thank you. Questions of Chief? No. Good. Okay, thank you. Communications? Lisa? Good evening. Um, I believe there was monthly uh, reports in the packet for January, February. We got a new 911 system in March, so I'm learning the new reporting uh, software for it. And um, updates on the radio. Um, I. Uh, you all approved uh, IT department proceeding with charter communications to upgrade our system. They're coming out Wednesday evening about 5 o'clock um, to make a change of equipment within our building, which will change out um, the fiber that we need for the radios to proceed. Then fire and police want to do the most win, so we have to look at the new radio system we're going to make some changes now rather than later um, because we can work that in at the same time so that when we do switch to most when it's all there. So I met with Motorola representatives, Chief uh, Menifee and I did Friday, was that Friday? I think it was Friday. Um, Friday with a, a Motorola representative who happened to be involved with the Most Wind project throughout the state. So he was very knowledgeable about the Most Wind. So he'll be getting back with us. And then once the switchover is made to the new um, fiber equipment for charter, then we should be able to proceed with the radios because uh, Wash PC is going to put us on our own VPN line, which I don't really know what that means, but that's what they're going to do. And it'll be just for communications for those radio circuits. So it'll pull them off on our own and we should be able to pass the test with flying colors. So very good. That's about it for us. Any questions of Lisa? Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Emergency management. Mark. Good evening, Council. I uh, apologize for my absence. Uh, last meeting, I was at a uh, required training in uh, Cape Girardeau. Uh, some completed projects. We've had seven of the NIMS Incident Command System classes, including one last Monday with the uh, Fair Board. We've had seven CPR classes, five for police officers and two for city co-workers. We held our uh, quarterly safety committee meeting last Thursday, so next meeting is in July. Uh, annual emergency management report has been given to the city administrator. The uh, Channel 4 KMOV storm team uh, visit came out to Washington High School gym on March 22nd, and that was very well attended. 
a uh, big crowd for that. A lot of people uh, stand in line for autographs, and they gave out a lot of good weather information. So it was a, a very good event. Along that line, uh, we uh, had the statewide tornado drill on March 6th. So thank you, those, uh, those of you who came in and checked in to the EOC. Uh, some projects in progress. Uh, myself and Sean are tracking and investigating the injuries and accidents we've had so far, and uh, we're running approximately even with last year to this point. Um, I'm still working with health care facilities and churches on their safety plans. Uh, new projects coming up. Working with city administration on renumbering City Hall. Uh, it's currently very confusing to the public. The basement, ground floor, one, two, so we're working on getting that uh, lower level one, two, three, so it makes sense just like when you're outside the building and looking at it, what it is, and getting the room numbers done. Uh, so making it more in line with standard floor and room numbers. And we're in the busy season for incident action plans for all the special events uh, that are happening throughout town. So April was a busy month and May is no different. Lots of special events coming up. Any questions? Mark, appreciate the email and the updates. Oh, yeah. Weekly, whatever, sure. monthly, that's nice. You know, what's coming up and where we're at, that's nice. Thank you. Good, good. My pleasure. Yeah, the bridge one went out this afternoon, so it's going to be, that's going to be significant lane shifts on the opposite side. So that's, that's all coming up. So very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Parks and Recreation. Darren. I'm going to give some project updates tonight. Uh, first one is the Riverfront Trail expansion. We continue to work on the trail and starting to work on the installation of the railings, waiting for some hardware to show up tomorrow. So should start seeing the first railings, hopefully going up sometime tomorrow afternoon. Uh, hopefully, if everything goes well, by this weekend, the railings will be up and the trail will be open to the public to walk. So that'll be good. Beautiful. Uh, Riverfront Electric, if you maybe have noticed on the, the Flag Plaza down there, we've been without electric for several weeks. We had a burnout wire underground, so we're trying to locate that and get that replaced, as well as the panel. It was a 70 amp panel, and we were running over 100 amps through there, so we're re upgrading that panel. So everything should be taken care of this week as well. Uh, roofing, uh, last spring, through the hail storms and wind and everything, we had several damaged roofs throughout the city. Uh, we worked with our insurance provider. They sent out an adjuster and looked at all of our roofs. And I've been going out. I've gone out to bid. There will probably be five different packages because they're all different types of roofs in different locations. So we're trying to group them. The first package A has already gone out. And we received bids. Uh, we're reviewing that right now to see where the insurance money is and what the actual bid and where we're going to go from there. Uh, package B and C should also go out this week, and then we'll follow up with the the other two packages. Uh, Ronzik fans and the grandstands, the wiring has been installed in that and the fans should go up soon. We have two uh, electrician volunteers doing that work, so that should be going up here in the next few weeks. Uh, our tree inventory through the tree grant, that trim grant that we received, Davy Resource Group has completed their field study and they have turned in a report to us. We are reviewing that report and assuming everything is good, we'll be passing that forward to you here shortly. Uh, the medians, uh, hopefully if ever, the weather and everything works out, we'll be out there probably two days this week to cut back the grasses and split some of the grasses, so expect some delays and lane closures out there. Most likely we're looking Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And that's about it on projects, unless you have any questions of me. Um, re recently it was brought to my attention that there's a lot of Bradford pears, uh, pear trees down on the, in the riverfront. Is that the case, or and do we have any plans to get rid of those like most of our trees we we wait until there's a problem before we take them down we know that all the pear trees are weak and probably need to be taken out but with manpower and everything else we're looking at all the the known hazard trees right now and removing the known hazard trees and then we'll get back and start removing some of the others Darren, I'm just going to warn you that when you said the trail will open by the weekend, Mr. Jones is already writing that in the paper ready. So are we confident that that's going to happen? <laughs> I'm, I'm confident we should be able to do that. Okay, we're good with all. We're ready to go other than the, the railings and the gate will open and we'll be fine. Yeah, I mean. I figured you posted already. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a no. week news day and he's going to have something yeah. to put on the front page. So I want to make but sure we're ready. Just so everyone knows, the trail will not be completed. There's still construction work and stuff that we need to do down there. Some backfilling and seating and some signage, that kind of stuff but it will be 
open to the public at this point. I know you didn't see him, so I want to make sure we <clears throat> we say it. Yes. Soft opening, <laughs> yes. hopefully by weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Public services, engineering, and oh, wait. air. Let's go to community and economic. Ron Arsall is going to do something. Oh. Ron, did you want to? Uh, you want to do, yeah. Did he leave? We'll get, yeah, we'll get Ron in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sal's out, so I'll, I'll just try to cover for him real quick on uh, economic development. Ron Understall with Washington Engineering is here to talk about the Schultz Industrial Park project. Um, as you noticed, the project's kind of going a little slower than what was anticipated with the weather concerns. I'm sure Ron can provide some details on that. So, Go ahead. You're up. Thanks for the intro. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> I can help you. Um, I'm Ron Ernstall, Washington Engineering Architecture, for those of you that don't know. Um, we're talking about the Schultz Industrial Park Retention Basin Pond Reconstruction Project. And um, as John alluded to, we've had cold and wet weather. Uh, we met with a contractor. The contract was originally to be completed April 7th. Uh, we lost about 32 days. So now the new completion date is May the 22nd. Uh, they're out there working. Uh, they're not the fastest group of contractors, but uh, we were able to make sure that fry meat expansion is satisfied. That part is taken care of. For some, I, I know Gretchen's new, some others might not, yeah. just to refresh them a little bit about this project. This is a, a stormwater, uh, as Ron said, a stormwater retention project that's out there by Frike's Meats. Uh, Frikes was doing an expansion, et cetera, and was going to need to go ahead and, and uh, take care of the additional stormwater runoff from their expansion. We applied for a community development block grant through the state to go ahead and help with that. Part of the project, though, is to take uh, the fill that goes in for that area mm -hmm. is being taken out off of Enduro Drive right across from Hodges Badge out there and Enduro Binders. There's a lot over there. What uh, Ron came up with a plan was to go ahead excavate that lot out so that we could go ahead and make it more pad ready, run that material down then for the for the facility. So I just wanted to give you a scope of that. That's what the project is. In other words, instead of buying fill from a quarry home and across exactly town, right. Right. we just went up the street and started pre-grading a lot that can be sold <clears throat> as the borough area. Which brings me to my next topic. Um, this job was bid out as a classified excavation project. And let me tell you what classified and unclassified is. Classified is where the contractors, all the contractors, uh, will give a unit price for rock removal. We had several um, uh, probes there and got, got rock quantity approximated based off of that. But certainly we didn't have a lot. I think we had six total on the whole area. But it really didn't matter as long as we had a unit price and we put in a budget amount of, of rock that had to be included in the contract. Well, as they, as they go along and they take the dirt off the top of the rock, uh, we go out and shoot the rock and get the top surface of that rock. And then we calculate it down to where um, it has to be excavated to. And we calculate how much that rock that is. <clears throat> if they want to excavate more than that in their own behalf, they don't get paid for it. But that's how it's calculated. So right now, we're at the um, <coughs> amount of rock that we had allocated in the contract. So we're going to have some more rock, and this is due to rock, a rock shelf that came in between the two borings. Uh, right now, we probably anticipate we're not done uh, excavating the rock, but we anticipate somewhere between forty and 45000 in extra to remove the rock to get it to the pad-ready area. Now, with that being said, the little bit on this job was $23,000 less than the community block grant amount. So we're looking at the difference between 23,000 and maybe 40 and 45,000 uh, for the rock excavation. We also got, can you explain to them a little bit about the bids on, on for what we, what the low bid was and then maybe the, do you have those, those oh, yeah. you know, price? Yeah. So they have an idea of, of how low they bid on this. Yeah, this, the, the company that got it was called Pangea Group. They were substantially lower than anybody else, which read a lot brought up a lot of red flags. Um, their contract amount was 654964 and their unit cost for rock removal was $20.77 a cubic yard. Uh, the next little bidder, his unit price was $40 a cubic yard. Uh, $20.77 is a pretty low number. Um, 
so it makes sense to, you know, at, at, I'm put this. Um, we could at this point tell the contractor to stop doing rock removal and leave the site out there as kind of undeveloped pad. But with this contractor at such a low price, we'll never be able to excavate it again at $20.77. So the prudent thing to do, and I think the best for the taxpayers, is to make sure they complete the contract and, and pay them the, the extra amount of rock, as always was planned, and get us a pad-ready uh, lot out there that we could sell and the other, at a higher price. And the other thing that we would probably make sure and pass along if the council agrees with doing this is then going ahead and figuring out how much the extra price per acre, tack that on to mm -hmm. the list price that we have out there on. Uh, right now, I think the list price for that lot is 35,000 an acre. So depending upon how many acres go along with that mm -hmm. pad, you know, you just tack that, that additional amount on there. Do they need the extra rock to finish out the project down by Frikes? No, uh, we're at the point now we don't. So what would happen with the extra rock we had in the contract, any extra rock would be spread uh, and made the building pad even wider on that particular lot, allowing a bigger building to go there. Hmm. Cool. All so it's kind of a win-win situation we're trying to make for both that sides. Lot as attractive as, as we oh, can. I, I don't understand what we're Great. trying to do. I, I just right. didn't know what they were going to do with it's, the extra rock. It's a difficult, developable lot, and and by doing this, uh, getting the borrow off of this to feed uh, into the pond, it makes it a little bit more attractive. And at this rate, we do it for $20 a cubic yard as opposed to going out for bid again, and it's going to be double or more than that. That's exactly it. That's, That's right. That's what we're looking at. It makes like no, it, to me, it right. seems like a no brainer, but I know Sal wanted to bring it up to everybody in the council to make sure you're informed. Um, that was always the intent. Appreciate that. Great. Okay. No, that's good. Do we need a motion to proceed? Yes. Or well, we're under contract to proceed. Well, we're now we need a motion to stop. A motion. Oh. <laughs> so continue as as contracted. We'll do. <laughs> do we need to do anything with that at our next meeting? Yeah, we'll have something formal, I guess, within the packet on uh, Monday, or not, whenever. The Two, Two weeks. weeks. Thank you, Ron. Cool. Mm -hmm. Ron. Okay, John, are you? Perfect. Good evening. Okay, I'll try to keep this brief. There's a lot of items here. Um, first off, the uh, the airport. Um, right now, we're under construction of uh, removing the asphalt and converting that to uh, uh, concrete at the the uh, tarmac, essentially area right in front of the uh, the uh, hangar or the main hangar. Um, they're about 90 percent excavated on phase one. Phase one is about 75 percent of the overall project. So it's phase. Phase one, phase two, phase two is much smaller, but they're about 90% complete on that. So, I mean, you can do the math, they're over 50% done as, as far as the ex excavation goes, um, or around 50% for the project. Um, that being said, they are behind schedule. Um, they, I've, I met with uh, CMT, or I, I spoke with CMT, our, our consultant today, just to kind of figure <laughs> out why that was. We did send out a letter reminding them what the liquidated damages were on the project. Um, not get a response yet. Um, right now, the best we can tell, is uh, they just, um, they seem like they're working a little slow. We did in, uh, find some uh, subgrade soils that were not able to be compacted to what's necessary, so we're over excavating those, um, approximately two feet and recompacting. That is part of the contract. Um, there, there is no ad anticipated right now for that. Um, we did uncover a few drain pipes. Uh, they were specifically downspout pipes that were not um, uh, found in the topo. Um, I'm working right now on getting a number to replace those clay downspout pipes with plastic um, because it does not make sense to me to put, uh, eight, you know, eight to ten inches of concrete over top of old clay pipe. So we're going to work with them on getting that done to see what the ad is. I'll, I'll brief you on that once, once we get those numbers. Um, but other than that, it's, it's going fairly well. I, I've not heard any negatives from any users of the airport. We are able to get airplanes in and to the hangars and then on to the actual uh, uh, runway itself. Um, in addition to the airport, the uh, FBO contract, uh, we did receive one statement of qualification from Washington Aviation. Um, Darren and I are going to review those hopefully Wednesday this week just to get our first look at them. Um, and then uh, the contract negotiation will start then with hopefully a contract in front of you all the second council meeting in May. That contract is up in May um, with the caveat that we can extend it as necessary with our current um, operator. Uh, but uh, the current operator is the only one that submitted a statement of qualifications. 
So we'll just have to work that out. Um, what, a couple of MoDOT items here, uh, well, city item, but Bluff Road. Um, Bluff Road, the, the project is sitting at the federal government right now getting uh, approval. MoDOT did approve the project. Um, so I hope to have that by the end of the week. Once that happens, MoDOT sends out a concurrence letter to, to go out to bid. Um, the bidding process is probably two to three weeks. Uh, we have to review the bids. It's got to go back and forth to MoDOT. So right now we're targeting a uh, first of June, early part of June start date. The important part there is that we'll take it into the fair. Um, I have met with um, JB with the fair board, let her know what the schedule is on that. She was able to get all of her flyers updated just to make sure that the entrance for the motorsports people were, were coming in off Vosbrink. She seemed to me that there was no major concern with that. The fair will have access through Vosbrink and every other location around town. Quite frankly, I don't see a big issue with this. There may be some signage that has to get shifted around, you know, because I know they utilize that, um, uh, that the T intersection of Bluff and 100, there's a lot of signs that go up. We right. may have to shift those around a little bit. But it, it's going to be one of these things we're just going to work around. There will be access. Um, it, it may do something. I think they use the parking lot at, um, um, uh, not what's the business? Clemco. Clemco, yep. So we'll have to work that out. But I'll work pretty close to the contractor just to get them to understand how important that is once we figure out what, what that individual is. Thanks for that, John. I think that everyone I've talked to, it's been, you know, it'll work. And don't put the project off until after the fair just because, um, you know, we worry about the buses and things <clears> like that, too. And we but, were, and, and from a fair board standpoint, exactly what you touched on. It's just a matter of signage that things are put in the right spot to direct that traffic because there's some people who are going to be creatures of habit. And there's some who are new that will have to be known where to go. So I think it's it, you're on the right page. Everything's good. It's just a matter that. of people need to know. It's, a, it's it, a big so. project. I mean, we're, right. you're essentially cutting off one of four, probably the main entrance into the industrial park. So the biggest concern for me is when you're running three shifts at an industrial building, you only get your workers in and out efficiently. Right. So it, it's gonna take a little bit of effort of, uh, you know, people going to work every day, trying to find a different route, whether that be, you know, through the park system, which isn't the best. Uh, maybe you use Bluff Road if you're going uh, westbound rather than Vosbrink. It's just going to be one of these things we have to work together on. But we'll, we'll get the information out as it comes in. Right now I'm targeting early June um, with the goal being before school to, to, for the bus barns, things of that nature. So we'll accelerate this contract. I mean, we'll, we'll put a date in there that makes them get out there and get it done. Uh, but I'm pretty confident that it's going to, I mean, well, it's going to go. Um, and it's going to be a, a big benefit. So. Um, Secondary MoDOT, this is not a city project, but I know, I'm know i sure everybody's noticed the, the work zone signs that's been on Highway 100 and 47. MoDOT in their design build safety uh, projects, which were, um, it's the same projects that came out of when they were floating the roundabout idea. Um, they're putting in what's uh, skid resistant pavement. Um, if, if you've noticed, if you've traveled out west uh, to New Haven area, it's, it's like a, it's like an upgraded chip and seal is really what it is, but it, it, what it does is it increases the, the, the friction on the pavement to try to stop cars, you know, to, to reduce the actual skid when a car has to stop. That will go on in the evening. Now, I did ch make sure that I checked with MoDOT. There's going to be 10-minute queues or 10-minute stoppages when they do lane shifts at night. So that's in the contract. It's in MoDOT's contract with their con you know, contractor. So at any one time, you should not sit in traffic more than 10 minutes. Now, 10 minutes is a long time. You can get from you drive 12 miles in 10 minutes. But uh, just keep that in mind that uh, that is what's going on, and that is going on 47 as well uh, from uh, Washington to, to Union. So, um, and I, I did not get a schedule on that. They will be working west to east, though. And my, my big concern is making sure they're off of Osprey Drive before we shut down Bluff Road. But you said on 47 between Washington and Union, but also 100. Um, yeah, 100 between Washington and New Haven. So. And working west to east, so they'll be putting in guardrails. There'll be rumble. I think there's some rumble strips, centerline rumble strips going in. Some new signage. It's all safety related. Centerline. Centerline rumble strips. Yes, sir. So, um, okay. Like um, Elbert Drive. The contract was awarded with the uh, nine-foot island, as was discussed at the last council meeting. So we're still waiting on getting the uh, the bonds and performance bonds from the. Uh, from the contractor so as soon as they get those in we'll get those get that project scheduled the big thing with that is if, if the well, when the trail gets open on saturday there will be a little bit of a coordination thing to get that galber drive paved but we'll work that out um concrete projects fifth and hancock that's the um the uh, culvert replacement project um, that will be another project that's going to affect traffic um, it is in the contract to use steel plates to make sure traffic is open but i would see narrow down lanes between 
uh, at Hancock by the doctor's office when that happens. <coughs> Once again, that should go pretty quick. It's a pretty shallow pipe. The thing is you may backfill, you have rock, drive over top of rock, there'll be some bumps, things of that nature, but we'll work that out so we can get in pave. I expanded the paving area a little bit there because there were some water main breaks to the west that occurred a couple years ago, and I figured now's the time to pave over top of those and, and get them smooth again, so the whole intersection's good. Um, bigger items, landfill. Um, the excavation of the uh, final cell is complete. Um, it, it went very well. Um, McFry Excavating actually did a, did a very good job. Right now, we're working with them um, to place uh, the first lift of the liner. The clay liner that we have on site does not meet the minimum specifications. Um, it, not to go into detail, but it's 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 a little off. So you can you can kind of massage that that clay a little bit to get it to meet the specifications. It's an impermeable. You don't want the water to seep down through it. That's why it's a liner. So you can add water to it and compact it. That's what we're trying to do. We're doing a couple test areas. So some hundred by hundred test areas to ensure that we can use material on site. Backup plan is you can add bentonite to the material. It gets a little costly. Other backup plan is there is a availability at a different at a neighboring property you could haul in. I do not want to do either one of those, so we are going to try to uh, to get this moisture content correct. Once that happens, then um, I, I probably am going to come to you with a change order to keep McFry on the job. They do have all their equipment mobilized, so it would be uh, get them on the job, and then we would also then maybe subcontract out with a with a separate liner company. So we essentially become the generals of the project. That's what I'm proposing, not necessarily in front of you tonight, but that's kind of where this is going. So you, you, you have, it's, it's clay placement and then aligner is really all it is. Once that happens, we are, we're ready to open, still targeting late July, you know, mid to late July. And I do have a current landfill survey, but I have not seen the results of it yet. So um, it is sitting or in process. So I'll have that report for you. Hey, John, got a question on what you're talking about landfill? Yes. Have you been out there lately? I have been out there. Okay. I was out there Saturday. It seemed like there was a lot of extra debris floating around. There is, we are at the end of the life of the landfill. That so um, we had a meeting uh, uh, a week ago, and, and Tony can, can chime in a little bit. Um, with the wet weather and us working on those side slopes, there's a lot of debris. Um, I know he's got trash personnel out there every single day picking up trash. Um, DNR does inspections. I mean, we're, I feel like we're on top of it, yeah. but it, it is a little bit of a struggle um, when you get down to the end because the trash really has no... Right. Once it blows off the hill, it's outside the landfill. So. Um, but I, I can assure you, I mean, we're, we're, yeah, I was just thinking about the DNR and all that stuff. Yep. We, trash is a big issue. Trash is one of the, or, you know, blowing debris, blowing yeah. litter, things of that nature. I know for a uh, while we were putting up a lot of, uh, fences to yep. catch that stuff. Uh, actually, um, Tony has a, uh, a, a movable bear, a movable yeah. fence now that we can hold tight to the working face. The problem is since we're at the end of the life, there really isn't yeah. much of a working face. Right. So I think it's just a derivative of, we're, we're just we're in tight quarters mm -hmm. and it's trying to just keep up um dnr knows that we're well the new cells right there you can see it so i mean it you know it's a six acre hole in the ground so they they know what we're working towards and i think i mean i'm confident we'll get there mm -hmm. but uh we'll, we'll we'll look at it and sure no. i haven't been out there today but uh no 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 i, I happen to be out for saturday and just kind of noticed it it seemed like an extra lot this time i i i can um i'm not surprised by that so we'll, we'll work on getting it cleaned up so, um, anything else? Good? No, no, that's, that's good. I, just something I appreciate that. No, that's good. If you noticed it, everybody else would too. So, um, uh, as far as DNR goes, our MS4 audit, um, once again, MS4, I've been kind of hinting at this a little bit, um, um, or the uh, uh, separate stormwater system. Uh, that audit's planned probably for early June. I've not gotten the okay for or when they are going to be in town, DNR. Uh, they said clear your desk for three days. We'll be here for three days going through everything. Um, that may in, that'll be include on-site inspections of all of our facilities. It'll include detention basin inspections and everything. Um, I could tell you that our detention basin inspections, I've not seen one ever on file, and I've not done one since I've been here. So um, it's just one of those things that we didn't, we've not necessarily kept up on. Um, I would anticipate um, that they're most concerned about is going to be water quality which that's different than how we detain water now. Water quality is the actual physical quality of the water, not how much you have. So we don't have anything on our, within our ordinances that addresses water quality. So you can envision um, rain gardens as a word it's term, you know, thrown around, bioretentions, one, things of that nature. So luckily I think we have some experience in house where we can 
mitigate and work with DNR on this. So I just want to kind of give you all a heads up about that. And, and if I could add in that point, that, that we're not just talking about the facilities that the city no. owns per se. We're talking about any detention retention facility that's been approved in a development. And it may well be in the ownership name of the lots within that subdivision. Most of them are. Yeah. So if you can- And they're, they're gonna be looking at those just as much as anything else. So a detention basin for, you know, for example, if you had a 30 acre development, residential development that came in, uh, typically the city does not take those over for maintenance. You put the maintenance on the subdivision. Well, what happens is, is over time, um, there is no subdivision board anymore. So the individual lot owner may live up on top of the hill. He doesn't care what the hole at the bottom of the hill looks like, but technically on his plat, he's responsible for maintenance of that. Well, if the city doesn't come in and enforce that maintenance, then you almost have 25 to 20 years or so <coughs> where somebody doesn't even know that they're responsible for that. I mean, who reads their plat? So it's one of those things that it becomes a little tricky and that's, that's we're gonna have to work through that. So, um, I'm getting there, I'm sorry. Uh, FEMA, uh, FEMA was in town. They did a review of our flood insurance rate maps. Um, that started actually back in, uh, back in February. I did not really report on that because I was pretty confident there would be no changes. Worked pretty diligently with, uh, with their contractors, submitted all the, all the hard work that the city did back in 2012. They said that that was the most data that they've seen so far, so they were very happy. They did not make any changes. So kudos to you all for uh, approving that contract back then. Um, all the, there will be an ordinance in front of you just updating the date of the map, but there's been no change to our flood insurance rate maps because of that work. That's, good. So that's very, very good. Um, and then finally, oh no, I'll find one more thing. Uh, ADA transition plan, we're 85% complete. Um, I submitted the pay reimbursement of $8,000 to MoDOT last week. So that's $8,000 of a $92,000 contract, but you know, it's some. Um, <laughs> and hopefully uh, HDR will be here at some point in May uh, to give you an update where we're at. It's looking like about 2% of all of our sidewalks are ADA compliant. So keep that in mind. There will be uh, a cost number associated with it. But really what that comes from is cross slope. So if you're looking, you're walking down, you really can't have more than a 2% cross slope, which is like an inch give you something. So right now we're running around three to three and a half. So whoever put all the old sidewalks in back in the day, really like 3%. Um, and then Jefferson, eighth, in the 8th Street property, the old Frikes, that uh, commercial portion, we are out to bid for $150,000 minimum bid. Um, and we that's out to bid for two weeks. I did not get the completion. It's the, the date the bids are due, but it is in the paper. So anything else? Any questions of John? And you're doing an ADA ramp at the airport too? We are evaluating the ADA ramp at the airport. I think we can do some operational things where it may not be necessary. I want to see the cost on it. You could bring them in through the hangar and we could, we could also uh, do some striping, maybe improvements. But that, that's one thing we're going to look at as well. Okay. Yep. With that ADA transition plan, it did look at a lot of our facilities too. So um, it looked at City Hall. I mean, there was, there was a lot of extra benefit to that. So. Building inspections and codes. John. John McCreary, building official. Um, well, we're staying busy. I've got plans in for two car washes at the moment on my table, as well as several other residential projects. Um, Frikes is uh, moving along, as you know. Um, the uh, total access urgent care also. They got their ground rough in, so they're moving along as well. Um, we're just staying busy. How's your new help? Um, really good. Good. I'm very happy to have him. Um, he's he's got the right attitude and the right demeanor, and I good. think it's a good fit. Better for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Hey, okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Straight and solid waste. Tony. Uh, good evening. Um, to follow up on the landfill thing, that uh, 35 mile an hour winds we had last week just, and we're working on top of the landfill, it's like a big sailboat up there. So our uh, litter guy was out every day last week, bless his heart. And it, he does a great job, but it's kind of demoralizing. He's standing there and the trash is just blowing over the top of him. So we are making a good effort to stay on top of it. Uh, we did buy some, or we're getting some litter fences built. I think we may have talked about this before. 
Uh, we got the first uh, prototype out there now. We're doing some modifications, and uh, Haslag is working on that for us. So we're doing pretty good with that. Um, for the street department, we are going to start hauling off that house up on South Point uh, tentatively on Wednesday. If you went by today, you've seen that Franklin County already knocked it down and was scavenging parts out of it. So they'll be ready to go for Wednesday. We hope to have it, if not all day Wednesday, we should have it done by Thursday, just hauled out. Uh, we'll be working potholes around town this week, as long as it's not raining. Uh, big trash pickup week went well. We had a couple trash explosions we had to clean up, but for the most part, people kept it in contains. Uh, the e-cycle event, we had 406 cars a couple weeks ago and filled uh, three 53-foot tractor trailers to the top. So that was a good turnout. Um, we are working on getting proposals to restore or rebuild our trash compactor out at the landfill. <coughs> the difference of about a new one being about 750000 and a complete restoration from ground up being about 460000 So we're looking at a possibility of that. Um, we're doing some storm drain repairs around town as needed. We are assisting with uh, the cleanup on the house on Lafayette today, and I think they got that all wrapped up, gotten some of the stuff out of it, furniture and uh, appliances. And then we'll be starting asphalt repair tentatively next week. So, exciting stuff. <laughs> Any questions of Tony? All right. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Water and wastewater? Okay, Kevin could not be here tonight, so I'm going to cover for him. Uh, McGuire Iron, the um, Crestview Water Tower. I don't know if anyone saw this weekend, but it looked um, awfully bare. So um, all the paint's been removed. Lead-based paint is gone. Um, Kevin did get a report this morning that uh, McGuire was going to be removing the canopy system uh, from the tower, but it was up still today, so we'll get an update tomorrow. Quite frankly, it doesn't really affect anything, that uh, the painting operation. Um, we initially thought they would leave the canopy up because it does provide them a, a, a secondary insurance plan to not um, have issues when they roll the actual paint on if there's some paint splatter or something. Um, but they, they can do it either which way, it's at their risk. Um, we would have preferred to leave it up, uh, but uh, then they may still do that. Um, other than that, if you've been up there, it is kind of a mess. There's uh, quite a bit of uh, dirt. They pretty much tore up the grounds. Um, Kevin did provide them with uh, uh, three local contractors that are very capable of, uh, of repairing the grounds to their, to their previous state. So they'll be working on getting that done. Um, we're on track to get it painted. They, they want to start painting hopefully tomorrow. So um, I think they're having 10 guys go up there with rollers. So if anyone likes to paint, you Dude, can maybe, <laughs> you can maybe uh, get a second job. So um, but yeah, so everything's going pretty well. Um, hopefully that'll help with our water main breaks once we get the tank filled back up. That's the cause of the breaks around town is we just don't have that pressure um, uh, capacity to kind of fluctuate the pressures when all the pumps kick on. Putting the same lettering back on. No, the lettering is actually, it's City of Washington. It's a, huh? It says Washington on it, I promise you that. Uh, Washington, it's more of a script type lettering though. And you know, I, I've seen it once in passing, but I, I, I believe, I don't know if you all, I would I'd have to ask Kevin that, I don't know. I haven't seen that. I could not tell you that. I'll, I'll, I'll see public works. I know Pub, Board of Public Works uh, agreed to it. I know, but it was. <laughs> I want to say it was a year ago. So, but he can. Um, I'll have Kevin show that the next. Or I'll have it at the next council meeting. So yeah. that's not a problem. But it's more of a script. It's not script, but it's more of a flowing type letter rather than a block. A script. Yeah, yeah, cursive might be a little strong, but yeah. That's right. You're so. But yeah, it's a it's a sky blue color. I think we've reported on that. So it's a it's 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 not a green or a mint. Not, it's not mint green, but a sky blue. So. Paint some clouds on it. What's that? Paint some clouds. Clouds. What, hey, if you want to, we can. Change order. Change order. No. So if there's any, anything else on the tower. Anything else? It's a pretty neat process. Questions? Made for some good pictures. Yeah. And they're moving rather. Quickly, because they have they to are. be done. You know, yes, they have to be done. Yeah, May 15th is the completion date. They'll, they should hit that. That's good. Okay, thank you, John. Finance? Mary. I just have a couple of things this evening. Um, first of all, you have February and March packets, or um, collector's reports in your packet. Uh, sales tax is running about 10%. So that's very, very good. We budgeted relatively flat last year because we were uncertain. Last year we ended under, 
but that was due to timing with uh, Missouri Department of Revenue switching over their soft accounting software. So some of that's probably attributable to the prior year, but um, we're still running really well for this year. So hopefully that continues. Um, the uh, Tammy with Hoaxia Bloom and Company will be here May 21st to present the audit um, to City Council. Uh, and since Mary's not here, uh, business licenses and liquor licenses renewals went out last week. So everybody should be getting theirs in the mail. Um, and that's really all I have for finance. On the IT side, uh, Darren and I have been meeting uh, weekly with Wash PC, um, trying to keep the communication and um, flowing and uh, prioritizing and et cetera. So I think that's going relatively well. Uh, it's gotten a lot better in the last couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, we yeah. Mm -hmm. so. um, I did, we did uh, ask them to look at bidding out the computer or the uh, audio and camera equipment uh, bid, I guess. Um, we asked for additional camera bids and microphone bids on that, so we'll be bringing that to you at a later date. Um, and that's really all that I have on IT side. It should be less than that original bid that I think we gave you a couple months ago because at that right. time we had 12 mics because we were still basing it on this setup and then we just thought, why do we need to do the setup? This is fine. So the main thing, I think the improvement that you're going to see is the cameras themselves. The and, and we ordered put two lapel two microphones lapel are, that we and, can use. Um, <laughs> mics, thank you. Yeah. So, And we are at capacity now. So, but yeah. it dropped our, our, our original amount was like 20,000, and now it's roughly 12,000 by eliminating all of those extra microphones. So. Good job. But we'll be coming mm -hmm. back to you probably in May okay. with additional quotes on that. But that's really all I have unless you have questions. Any questions of Mary? Okay. Library? <laughs> Okay, um, we had a pretty good circulation, um, almost 1,100 items for the month of March. Um, our reciprocal agreement still remains about 80% CERC from scenic patrons and 20% for us. Um, we added 72 cards to the system and 33 were actually our patrons. Um, the rest were scenic patrons. And I can't even talk, passports, 55 were processed. Um, we are steadily seeing the effects of the laws uh, being passed. Um, people are coming in to get their passports. And so that may increase until everybody in the area kind of gets theirs taken care of or legislation changes. Um, fees did raise April 1st. Uh, all passport agencies get $35 per passport now instead of 25 so that was passed along to us. Um, our wireless um, usage has been down. Um, I think because of technical issues we have been having, but I think things have been a lot better lately with our connection. So as we get the new routers installed, we're working with Wash PC. Um, I think that that will go back up because people will find out, oh yeah, they've got really good Wi-Fi at the library again, and so they'll come back in. Um, and because of family reading night, um, we had almost 1,400 people participate in library-related programs and activities. So Ruth McGinnis works really hard on family reading night every year, um, and this year we added additional craft tables and reading rooms and so she assigns everybody a book um, and then gives them ideas for a craft to do um, and so that's a lot of work on her part and we enjoy being a part of that so is there any other questions you guys have for me or any questions <laughs> is the computers working any better you said that earlier they um, we have some bugs and we're working on that too. Some of them just need to be replaced. So I had asked for a little bit from the sales tax to help with that, but I think that I'm also, I have some money budgeted. I'm working on replacing some as we go, just because they 
Um, some of them are older, and so they take daily abuse all the time. Um, when you have 10,000 people come in a month, um, and at least 10% use the computer, and some are coming in every day, there, there's a certain point where the computers just say, I'm done. So, but we're working on that, and I'm going to be talking to Wash PC about getting bids and good pricing for the computers that we need. Now, do you have a time limit for people to be on it? They can have three hours on the computer. <laughs> um, and there's some, they're there for three hours a day. Um, we serve a lot of people that don't have internet access because it's not available where they live, and they may not have a computer at their house. So they're able to come in and use ours for free. They have to pay to print, but we don't charge them for internet. We don't charge them to use the computer. And so there's still quite a few people. We may not think about it in this room, um, but there are a lot of people in the area that cannot uh, afford to do that. They also can't afford maybe cable TV or satellite. And so that's why our uh, DVD circus so high. They come in every day and get 10 movies, <laughs> um, you know, and, and that's their entertainment. And so the library provides a big service that way for these people. So. I know we made a comment just now about going to Wash PC for bids, but I want to make sure that we're going to other people for bids as well, not just Wash PC when it comes to our computers. Mm -hmm. we, we can go ahead and we, we will. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Human resources. Shauna. I feel like I should do something exciting because we're getting near the end. But good evening. Um, this evening, I just wanted to update you on our hiring. So we are currently uh, placing ads back out for our dispatcher position that's open. And we have a maintenance worker one that is open as well in the water department. That's due to some moving of um, a, a, young, uh, a young man who was in a maintenance worker one moving up to a maintenance worker two. So we have that position open on maintenance worker one in the water department. And we are starting the process to um, go out to find our new building official after John McCreary retires in July. So we have that open. We will also do an internal posting this week for a position in the water department as well. So that's our job openings. You'll see those in the Missourian. We're also going to be placing some of them on Indeed, the jobs, uh, the Missouri jobs, jobs.gov. And then we'll have several industry uh, in the building official especially. We're going to be placing those on some industry specific job sites as well as the municipal league website, some places like that just to get that as, as far out as we can, not just locally, but even maybe a little further out than we've looked before. And then on our execu time, which is the time clock system, we are, um, many of you know, probably on the Kronos system currently, which was quite outdated and there was a decision made to switch to ExecuTime, which is a Tyler product that interfaces with our current system. And we've been working with that since I came on board. We are at the point where um, in our on the IT side, the time clocks are in-house and they've been working to get those installed. Um, with the transition, we've, we've kind of had to take a step back, but we are back on track with that. And we are ordering proximity badges that will be used with those time clocks. And those are being ordered and then they'll be programmed. The next step, we'll be doing some system, system configurations f from the HR side, putting in people's vacation, holidays, what shift they work, how many hours they work. So we're doing that now. And we will run a pilot group of about three of our departments that will test both the old system and the new system side by side to make sure that it's working the way that we think it should work. And then if that goes well and we have two good parallel tests, then our tentative go live date for the entire city uh, system will be June 24th. And then everyone will be on the new ExecuTime system. Some of the perks of this system are it is it's real time, so when you clock in, you'll be able to pull up a website and look at your clock in right then. Um, supervisors will be able to pull a report that says who's clocked in, who's here, um, who's not, so you can see that right away. And the employees will be able to look at their time balances online. They'll each have a login and a website that they can go to, pull up what they've worked for the week, if they worked overtime, if they had any time off. They'll also be able to request time off through this system. So it really will be a great step forward for the city um, in allowing our employees to, our hourly employees to see their time and to be able to manage that better. 
Um, we are also participating, um, helping to kick off the PB and J drive for the United Way that the city is going to help with. And so that will be in the month of May. And that will be where employees can bring in peanut butter and jelly on Wednesdays and be able to wear denim to work. So that will be every Wednesday in the month of May. And I'll assist with that along with uh, other members of administration. I do have one question sure. on our on our employee pay scale. Um, the lowest number being, I guess, my main question is: our part time help is not on the scale. They did not make the the salary survey last time. From my understanding, that is correct. The okay. part time and seasonal did not get evaluated. Full time, part time. Right. Okay. I mean, it, I guess my question is: can the part time people be on the scale as a, a, a number below there? I know they wouldn't get the cost of living increases like they do. Um, I guess there's some current concerns in the library, possibly in the parks department where there's part-time employees and they would still be, they would make our scale, I guess, with no other additional benefits, but just nothing else, make our scale. And maybe they would know when they do go to full-time, what kind of jumps there could be. Um, and someone else looking to, to look into that would be advantageous, maybe. We will, we will go ahead and put them on there. I mean, they do get paid. I guess. I understand that. <laughs> Currently, there, there's a caveat on, the, on our pay scale that says it's like 75 cents below the, the full-time equivalent of that position. Okay. So it's, currently, it's a prorated amount that they're, the, gotcha. the part-time equivalent position would be at a prorated amount of the full-time. So we would look at that full-time pay scale and then and do a proration of that is the way it's currently set up. But we can definitely awesome. evaluate those part-time positions internally. We can use the um, structure that the previous Do, do we have a different scale for different part-time workers? I mean, if we have a different, I guess what I'm saying is if our lowest level for full-time is a 10, then should we not have a seven, eight, and nine for part-time that may be pool lifeguards as opposed to, I mean, a bad example, because I know we've contacted that out, but <laughs> pool cashier. parks department, library, those kind of things that we could be, you know, a, you know, the different pay scale would, what it would be when you go on a look. We can take a look at that. I think would probably mean more to them. We're going to look at the personnel policy manual with regards to some perks that are full-time, part-time people, uh, because they're not addressed. I mean, it gets down to just recently we awarded safety bonds, in Correct. example, and if you're part-time you don't receive if, that if you're part-time and you work more than 1200 hours you you can qualify for that but we ask that part-time employees not work more than 24 hours a week or 28 hours a week right. um, to keep them with within the ACA requirements for sure. providing benefits so we are evaluating the um, next big project for the personnel and procedure manual will include also things like holidays how do we want to handle that for our part-time employees currently they do not receive that benefit is that something that we want to look at That's to say just one example what right. could we do? What else could we do? I guess is my question. Right. right. What else could we do yeah. to ensure that those employees feel that they're valued because right. they are, right. they are valuable. They're a valuable part of our system. Level. Right. You would find a level, whatever the number, I don't want to try to reinvent the wheel here. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to below that, that there's different levels of part-time and it may be more attractive to some for a summertime job or whatever. So thank you. Definitely. Good. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Shauna. Administration? Uh, before I go into, I just got a brief thing, but John forgot to mention something when uh, he was up there. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shauna. <laughs> okay, it's part of a uh, collaborative effort between uh, public works and parks. Um, we, we, we came up with, this, with the safety tow footwear policy. Um, I don't know if, if you've heard of this. We've been kind of floating this idea for uh, you know, basically four months, and I've kind of spearheaded this to kind of draft this policy to try to get this, you know, something in front of you all. So I can kind of pass this around, um, kind of what it looks like or what we are proposing. Um, essentially, where this started was uh, Tony and, and Kevin and Darren and myself um, realized that there's really no policy set in stone as far as your footwear. And with uh, Mark Scornia coming on board, you know, we got his support as well. So it's been kind of an overall. Um, discussion piece uh, but there's as far as footwear in the field uh, specifically safety safety toe shoes um, was one of the biggest issues so we all got together and said okay well if we're going to require essentially some equipment um, should we look at at least or at least come to you all with a with a proposal uh, to kind of offset some of those costs so um, some of the ideas floated is you could have a boot truck that would come in 
uh, to, you know, on site, and just like MoDOT does that actually, you go to one, one location. Um, but working for MoDOT, I didn't necessarily appreciate that because I was forced to wear a boot that didn't quite fit my needs. So we came up with this kind of plan, which is essentially a reimbursement program. It's kind of modeled off the, poli the police officer's um, uniform or, or your uh, equipment. Um, you can read through this, take this home. This is not at all, this is more of a draft. I forgot to put draft across the back. Obviously it's not a draft that would come to you anyway for approval, but uh, take a look at it. What really the meat and potatoes of it is, is it's a hundred dollar reimbursement is what we propose. That number can fluctuate up or down. I picked a hundred dollars just because that's what I picked. Um, it was a hundred dollars. There's about 60 employees that would be eligible for this. Um, every one of those employees would have some sort of outdoor would say in their job description. So for example, myself would be a, a an interesting scenario because I'm kind of on the fringe. Now I am out in the field sometimes, but I'm not out all the time. So if my job description did not say outdoor, I would not be eligible. I don't know if it does or not. I don't recall, but um, but you have that ability essentially to get reimbursed up to $100 once um, per fiscal year, and it would be up to the departments internally to budget those dollars. We've not worked with finance yet to see how, how it all gets done. I just wanted to kind of get this out there, so I apologize, Mary, but we will work through that. Um, right now, I know the, the police department, they essentially, the last page just shows a memo that they, that they, they put together. It's to from, goes to the finance department, and it, gets, it just essentially gets reimbursed as a, um, as a separate check or as a one <clears throat> tacked on to a normal one. Um, big item there is I just want to make sure that they're all ANSI -A certified uh, boots, so I want to have that sticker, you know, those, those stamps and everything on them. Um, it's just for you to look over. I know it might have. Well, let, let me make a real but. comment on this real quick. Yes, yes, and yes. You should. This is probably something we probably should have done a long time ago. And that hundred dollars is nothing compared it's to not. an accident. And I'm going to go one step further for like you or anybody that walks out in the field, even though you're not classified. Mm -hmm. If you're out in that field, you should have something on your shoes. Hundred percent. Because it takes one accident, and sixty times a hundred is going to be chump change. And I can so. say we've had within the department, and obviously we'll not go into any details, but there's been a couple incidents here in the past couple of months that were foot injury yep. of, of the type. Now, would they have been prevented with, with, with safety toe shoes? I couldn't tell you that. But would they have been reduced? Quite, it's quite possible. So, I mean, it doesn't take anything to drop a manhole lid on your foot. But you got to think beyond that. You know, you got trailers out there with skid loaders. And I'm going back from what happened to an accident that I had, what, 20 years ago, that, that tongue on that, that trailer broke. And if I wasn't wearing safety shoes, I wouldn't be having toes today. So working around any type of heavy equipment, I mean, it's really something we should probably have done. So I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up. And, right. and the hundred dollars is is very fair. And it, and a lot of companies do that. A lot of companies have that hundred dollars. And the reason with the hundred dollars is actually it kind of worked out pretty well because we went out we went out to bid for our uniform yeah. cost and we saved about a hundred. It was about fifty six hundred bucks. On our, on our citywide uniforms by going to one uniform. So this at least provides the managers the ability to, to say, hey, do you not have shoes on? Or, Where's your safety to toes today? You don't have them. We may not have a job for you till you get them type thing. So right now we don't necessarily have that ability. So this is just kind of our first effort to try to get that done. Yep. And and I, I, I think Sean from HR and I think Mary with um, uh, with insurance and I, and I know Mark with, um, uh, safety, you know, workplace safety, I think would all agree and endorse sure. this. So I guess all I'd like to know is, I mean, if the police department already have this in place, we have the equipment in place, not the boots. They don't have a safety shoe. No, I understand that. But I mean, you have a, a uniform policy. Keep, keep in mind, they were not included with, yeah, they're not. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. This, this is for public works, essential employees. No, I agree. I was just thinking that we don't try to reinvent the wheel again with that. If we're already part of it in the police department, but I'm with Jeff. One thing I'd like to know is, is $100 the right number? Yeah. Does it need to be 150 <clears throat> or, you know, whatever the number needs to be, how do we research that? We, like I said, 100 was chosen just because I think we could fit it into the budget. We could look at going with 100 you know, next to immediately and then look at the next fiscal year budgeting higher. I, it's, it's kind of whatever. I, I know that, um, you know, an example, Tony brought up a good point. His, uh, his trash collectors, you know, I don't want, you know, they're, you're not going to wear eight-inch boots when you're out there collecting trash well they make Reebok I mean Reebok or you know, New Balance makes a safety toe tennis shoe I, I don't yep. necessarily care that it's not a boot I just want to make sure your toes are protected you don't do me much good if you can't walk around yep so come on up come on oh, yeah come on yeah ANSI and ASAT or TM are they're not cheap either though 
that, no, right. Not and we want to make sure that, that they're the right ANSI for right. their job and all of that. I have some experience working locally with Brown Shoe here in town, and they actually will set up a program as well where employees could go in and you would set up an invoicing system. We could maybe work with finance where they could go in, pick out their boot, be fitted right on site, get the right boot for the right size, and then they would bill the city. So we had some, some different options, but the reimbursement seemed like the best option because we have such a wide variety of employees. That's right. And you know they may not all want to wear a boot, but some of them may want a, a tennis shoe that's steel toe or a rubber boot. So we did kind of look at all those options also we've kind of bounced back and forth on those but there are options that people have in town they wouldn't have to go to chuck's boots necessarily you know they, there are options here in town also that they could get these shoes that they would need and it wouldn't cause a create or create a big burden on the employee to get that and that was that, that's exactly the point that was my concern was that if you go to one one vendor or one you know boot truck you're going to get uh, some people that like them and a lot of people that don't. Right. And if you get a lot of people that don't, they don't want to wear them. If you don't want them wearing, all they do is, you know, they're, right. they're not happy at their job. So you got to kind of play that out. So by giving people the ability to do whatever's there necessary, as long as, you know, you do a little boot check on them every, every morning or whatever you want to do, that they meet those minimum requirements. Yeah, the only, could really I'm, I'm going to go spin off what Jeff said. The only thing I'd be concerned because those, those boots aren't cheap. You're asking your employees to foot the bill, so to speak, no pun intended, uh, for for safety and, and that that is a concern I don't know if Look it up maybe it. that first one right off the bat maybe we should have a higher reimbursement amount. I don't know I'm just I would just say if that was the case we just have to make sure that it's budgeted and we could come to a budget with a budget amendment to do that I, I don't know yeah. within the individual departments where they sit right the, uh, right now I do know that we evaluated the hundred and we all felt okay. that we could make that happen today mm -hmm. Um, From my experience, you're gonna you're gonna spend hundred dollars on a pair of boots, or you're gonna be required to spend two hundred dollars on a pair of boots, so you get the hundred dollars back. Right, right. We're not looking to it's buy something. their shoes yeah, every right. single day, no, but you're probably right there. Jim. You know, the, the added cost is what we're trying to yeah. cover. So the hundred dollars usually always covers that part. In my that was experience, the idea. And you were well, hoping we, to implement this as soon as we can. You weren't going to wait for the next budget season. Correct. Budget. We were hoping. I mean, for every day that goes by, I mean, th there's a certain amount of risk every day. I mean, right. sure. Well, I'm in complete favor. Do we need a yeah, motion for them to proceed or just I'll make a motion to proceed? Yeah, I'd second that. OK, we have a motion by Pat Gee, second by Moheski to proceed with the policy and procedure safety toe footwear policy as it reads. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Perfect. You Keep in mind, we, we will we can reevaluate as time goes on, too. The dollar amount won't change, but we may reevaluate the wording. Mm -hmm. It's a little wordy to read, but read about the, the wording um, just to yep. make sure we get it right. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. And Shauna. Okay. So for the essence of time, I just, those guys touched on some other items that I was going to go ahead and mention. I do have a couple items in executive session, uh, but before that, I, I am proposing a meeting. Uh, with a couple of park board members, uh, Darren and uh, Darren Dunkel, and then I think Jeff and Mark Heidrich, I've invited them. I invited them because they took part, this has to do with the, um, there was a fee schedule that the Parks Department had discussed putting out um, a, back in 2016, I think is what the, the date was on the memo. Uh, and in light of the discussion that we just had recently, it was brought to my attention again, and we probably need to take a look at that. So what I'm going to ask are, uh, for that group to go ahead and take a look at that. We'll have a couple of council members, we'll have a couple of park board members, take a look at that, see if there's any way. I, in my, I, I'm looking to see what we can do to go ahead and simplify it. I will say it's a little complicated right now with regards to, depends on who calls and what time of day they call. And I mean, it's, it's almost you need a slide rule to figure out how much it's going to cost to get the, uh, a pavilion or something. But uh, we would like to go ahead and see if we can simplify that and talk with them and then bring that back and we'll make sure that their full park board is understanding of it and then bring it back to you as a city council um, in, in the future. So first step was gonna go ahead and set up a meeting but I thought we needed to go ahead and do that. So that's this Friday, we're gonna have it at uh, 3.30 here at City Hall. Um, and then I do have a couple of, uh, we have three items I think for you in executive session. Anything else? I don't think so. Council Anything? comments? Not me. Do you have a council comment? Just the IT stuff, do we still just go to the 
who do we go to if we have a problem with the I would bring those into Sherry and and then I think what we will do is then we'll we'll do a ticket to make sure that wash PC can go ahead if you've got any issues with your iPad I know I was just trying to help Jeff earlier tonight but he can bring that in but you just needed your password I think for yours it, yeah we'll talk okay I just didn't want to overburden like I said if we mm. had we'll or they can just contact me and I can Finance and IT. Like for some reason, this this packet loaded really slow. I know. I think what they had proposed to do before was to load Chrome for iPads on your iPads, and then you could go ahead and it would move faster than Safari, yeah. which is already preloaded on your iPad. So that's um, something. If you haven't that, tried that. I don't know. Something that I would I would like to consider as the iPads wear out is not doing iPads and doing something that's more functional, like a Chromebook. Yeah. Um, because iPads have limited functionality for, I mean, you can't, it's, there's a lot more things we could do with equipment that would potentially be less expensive. I agree. We talked about that even internally with staff or whatever, that, that we could go ahead and start to do a replacement program for you on those. So, but since they were still out there, most of them are still functioning. It's a matter of. Yeah, I think at the time that's pretty much what was there yeah. when we started it. But so I mean, just defangled. just thinking of the amount of paper we're saving. I was going to say, just, yep. just when I first started, it was papers, yep. and that yeah. was a lot. Like we were getting binder every week. First yep. story is like, oh my god, it's a lot cheaper than what we were doing. <laughs> right. So directed, I think Mary just volunteered herself to go ahead. Oh. <laughs> 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 she's leaving IT. She's going. She's leaving fine tans. Going IT. <laughs> IT director, are you? One last thing that I wanted to comment on this evening was um, a year ago when we were going through our transition here um, at City Hall, I had met with all the department heads to kind of uh, visit with them a little bit about what their goals and their plans and different ideas that they may have and things like that. And then we talked a lot about um, what our goals were for a city administrator and things like that. And um, amongst us and so what I'd like to do this week is to arrange I'll be reaching out to you to arrange visits with you all again so that we can make sure that we're all on the same page and so think about a little bit about what you'd like to a direction you'd like to know about or see or we're getting a new uh, city minister no we're not doing that but uh, but you know Darren will be meeting with the department heads and uh, I feel like it's important to meet with council members so I'll be reaching out to you in the next week or so to set up a time and we can visit and uh, just to talk about our future in the city. So stay tuned. So great. And that's all I have. Public vote on whether or not to hold a closed meeting to discuss personnel, legal and real estate matters pursuant to section 610.021 RSMO 2000. Holtmeyer? Yes. Moheski? Sure. Patkey? Yes. Edit? Yes. Gornia? Yes. Waterman? Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you all for being here.